Well, hello there, folks. Welcome to Anza Borrego State Park in Southern California. Here we are in Split Mountain Gorge. Just beautiful geology to explore here. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Want to give you a little bit more insight into what's going on here in Split Mountain Gorge. This is part two. Part one, we focused on um, some of these sandstones, conglomerates, uh, some of the faulting and evidence for faulting we see there. Here in part two, we're going to look at a different unit that shows up just a few, just maybe, I don't know, not even a mile or less, maybe a kilometer uh, south of part one and mainly shows up at least here on the eastern side of the gorge. And so let's take a look at this stuff and then uh, let's look at the story that's behind this. Um, so right along the wash, the walls of the wash here, you can see this really impressive unit that contains exceptionally large uh, blocks, large boulders of material. Um, and you can see that the sizes of the material ranges quite a bit from very small material to quite big blocks. As we look at this a little bit closer, um, it seems like the blocks of material is the dominant um, particle or the dominant material we see in there, right? So the, the particles, the chunks of rock dominate more than the fine grained matrix material that might be between the particles. The other interesting observation is if you look at pretty much every single particle and look at what their composition is and what they're made out of. There's another big one down here, a couple more over here. As we zoom in and look at all these particles, even like the smallest ones, they look like they are all made of the same material. In other words, this is fairly uniform in terms of the composition of the rock types here. So we've got, again, back to observations, we've got uh, a huge range in sizes. So if we want to use some of our fancy words that you might have learned in some of my other videos, we might call this uh, rock type or this material poorly sorted because it contains a range of sizes from huge, you know, two meter, six foot diameter boulders down to basically sand and even smaller size material. So we could say it's poorly sorted. Um, it's fairly angular. Most of the particles tend to be quite angular with corners and edges on them, not seeing a lot of rounding in a lot of the particles. So they tend to be more angular than rounded overall. A little toothy one hanging down right here. And then we've got this uniform composition. All of the rocks in here, for the most part, look to be this granitic material, this granite um, that is really common in the peninsular ranges of Southern California, which is just to our west. So what to make of this? So I think in terms of rock names, we could call this uh, a breccia. Although sometimes when the clasts and the particles get really big, um, and we'll see how big they can get here. But if some of these particles exceed, you know, not just a couple meters or six, seven feet in diameter, but if we're talking like car size boulders, um, sometimes these units are called mega breaches. So let's head down, up down the wash a little bit. I guess we're going up the wash and look at some of the other outcrops here. Again, this stuff's just randomly, uh, chaotically thrown together. There's no obvious layering or bedding in the material. This unit sits, I believe it sits stratigraphically, um, I think it's below, I'll have to check that, The what we looked at in part one. So it's a little bit older. Let's head down a little bit further. I think we're gonna see some blocks in here that might really dazzle you a little bit, but more of the same, right? All granite, various shapes and sizes. Um, it's, it is cemented together, the material in general. You know, there's some hollow sections in there, but pretty hard. Um, here's a little bit different rock type in here, maybe more of a uh, darker igneous rock. But for the most part, I'd say 98% of all the material is all the same rock type. And so as we look at this thing, we start thinking about processes. We start thinking about what sort of process 
can transport rocks of these sizes, but we can't transport them too far because if we're going to transport them, uh, they t would tend to become rounded. If we're going to invoke moving water on a shoreline or a river, a big flood, these particles would bang together and would become quite rounded in terms of their shape. So moving water is not going to be a viable mechanism uh, as part of our story. Uh, we have no evidence and we're way too far uh, down in elevation and latitude for glaciers to be part of the story. Although glaciers can certainly move this much material. Typically with glacial deposits though, sure you might see some really big uh, rock particles, but the material around it will tend to be quite fine grained. So it'll be um, a lot more fine grained matrix surrounding the individual particles or clasts um, in a glacial deposit. So we're left again trying to figure out what process we could see here. And here's where it really gets exciting. Look at the size. That block, which looks like it's sitting on it, I bet that's still in place. I bet that's still embedded in um, the deposit itself. And as we come over to this one here, that one definitely is um, still cemented in with the rest of this material. And that particle's probably approaching three meters or 10 feet or so in diameter. Come a little bit further, the sun might not cooperate with us here, but we'll do the best we can. So again, more of the same, these really huge rocks embedded in the deposit. Big one over here. And I would contend even these big ones here, even though we can't completely see their extent because they're buried in some of this uh, wash material, the sand here. Um, this one here, I think I can convince myself this big rock is indeed attached to the rest of the material. So looking at the size of these particles, I think calling this uh, a mega breccia would be appropriate. So what's the story? How do you get rocks of this size transported? We can't transport them very far because otherwise they would end up becoming quite rounded in the process. So let's look at a little diagram I have here. The answer to this is mass wasting, big landslides. And this is a specific type of landslide that this one here that's been mapped out, it's called the Sturstrom. It's a German word. Um, it's basically a, a large catastrophic rock slide, move this over here, that collapsed down the face of the mountain. So imagine a huge chunk of rock sliding, possibly triggered by an earthquake. That would be a, a very likely mechanism. But then it hits the valley floor, and as it hits the valley floor, that massive, uh, that massive rock shatters into a bunch of smaller particles, but still particles as big as a car. And then that avalanche of rock fragments travels out across the valley floor. And in case and in the case of this particular Sturstrom, this mass of rock traveled about seven miles across the valley floor uh, to the west, uh, or excuse me, to the east, which is pretty incredible. Um, this all happened about 6.4 million years ago. That's the age on this deposit here. So pretty incredible story. And there's actually other ones similar to this. There's the Black Hawk landslide in Southern California and a few others whose names escape me at the moment. But this is the overall um, the, the process or the overall idea of how you can shatter um, rock into such big blocks, transport it, but not very far, right? So this thing was actually moving, had so much uh, velocity and force as it came down, it was actually able to travel out across the, the gently sloping valley floor for up to seven miles or about 11 kilometers, which is pretty remarkable. So fun little word for the day, a Sturstrom. Um, and again, the cool record of that event here embedded in the rocks of Split Mountain Gorge in Anzabrego State Park. Thanks for joining me on this little adventure. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, We'll see you on another part of Split Mountain that will look for a part three because I know there's more uh, interesting ge geologic structures and features to look at just uh, up the wash here. So thanks.